hours of sleep last night because the mm, because some people are shooting fireworks off at the park every single night probably the next week it happened last year it's gonna happen again this year I called the cops they do nothing <sighs> At least I got a video up from my not sleeping. So there's that. And now I'm finally caught up. It's day seven of NaNoWriMo and now today is the catch up day. So in order to do this quickly, cause I got a lot going on, I gotta get out of here. Um, I'm just gonna do a tag. Uh, I found this author tube theory and practice tag online. Um, I will link the original tagger and then the one that I found it through down below in the description. Uh, I thought it was pretty easy and if you wanted to know anything else about me, um, since now we've known each other for about a week now, so <laughs> maybe you maybe you have more questions. Um, all right, so the first question is how do you start a poem? And I don't really write poems. I do for myself sometimes if I just feel like being cheeky. Uh, I'll write poems to my boyfriend and he'll write poems back to me and we share them with each other. But I don't write them for um, other people and I don't write them to be published. Uh, maybe that'll change in the future. But right now, poetry to me is more of an art that I do. And I feel like Kate Cavanaugh did a video about this recently where we as writers don't believe that we are artists. And I just said that. Um, I don't think that my writing is an art necessarily. Poetry though, I do think is an art. And so in my mind, um, good or bad, that's where it lies. So how do you start a short story? Um, I tend to go with one idea. I have a list of ideas that I've been keeping track of this whole year. Every, every single time I come up with an idea, I put it on this list. So. I come up with ideas, um, one little what ifs, kind of one liners, um, and then I, I start writing. Uh, I watched a great video by Mary Robinette Kowald. It was on Brandon Sanderson's channel and it's about the mice quotient, um, M-I-C-E. And it's a, a good way to structure your short stories, to make sure that your short story has everything. And so you mull over an idea for a while and then you finally, you know, come up with something and you draft it out and you think, does that even make sense? Did I tell a whole story? Short stories are hard. I think um, when I first started, I thought, oh, it'll be so easy because it's short. But then you realize because it's short, you need to get a lot of information in each individual line. You can't waste time and, um, and space by putting in fluffy description, unless that fluffy description also comes back at the end to be like the twist that, you know, the main characters should have known all along they were in trouble or something. It's been really good learning how to write short stories. I think it also helps with my longer novel writing. Uh, and I'll go into that in another video because it's, it's a lengthy discussion. So the next question is, how do you start a novel? Well, similar to the short story, um, I, I try to get some sort of structure out of it, a beginning, middle, and end. Um, I start with an idea, something, sometimes it's a dream I've had, um, and then other times it's kind of like, have you ever looked at your favorite novels and thought, well, this would have been better if they did this? So sometimes you can get story ideas out of that. You could write that, um, Ready Player One with a female protagonist, or you could write the um, Sherlock Holmes, but his younger sister, like Enola Holmes, right? So you come up with your idea, and then for me as a plotter, I like to structure everything. I like to make sure that I, <laughs> that this idea has some weight to it so that I can um, write a whole situation out of it. I mean, so that I can actually say anything. I've had many stories that didn't have weight and then I had to give up on them because I didn't really know who the bad guy was or I didn't really know why these particular characters were in that situation um, besides the fact that I put them there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I think it, I don't know. Does anybody else have that? Like, how do you start a novel? I, I mean, you can start it any way you want, but for me, if I don't start with a structure and flesh it out, um, at least a beginning, middle, and end with some like prime moments. Um, 
then I, I probably will get writer's block later on. I'll, I'll lose interest. I'll want to work on a different story. So it's been a, a trial trying to get my writing strategy down um, and figuring out how, how I know when a story is ready to be written. Um, yeah. Do you have a writing strategy? Um, I just mentioned that, yeah. Uh, I basically do um, planning, prepping, uh, figuring out my beginning, middle, and end, my climax, my resolution, my inciting incident. Um, I love Abby Emmons' uh, videos, Writer's Life, um, her Writer's Life series, I guess you could call it. She does a great um, workbook. She sent out a workbook to her newsletter people uh, that explains how to have every single um, beat before you actually start writing um, and what goes into each beat, like the inciting incident. So it's helped a lot having those things. I do believe originally I was a pantser and I have the most fun when I'm just pantsing, um, just kind of going out of left field, don't know where I'm headed kind of thing. I write faster and I write more, but I think I write better if I plot it out. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, what's the next question? Do you compose on paper or computer? Oh, well, I mean, kind of both. I'm going off of this paper notebook right now. Um, just depends on how I feel. I don't like being on the computer 24 seven. I used to for my job, um, for all of my jobs, for all of time. I am born and raised a computer person. Well, not born. I do both. I have a typewriter that I just got during the pandemic and I am in love with that, but I don't get to write on it often because it really takes a lot more mental capacity because you have to know what you're gonna write before you write it. And then as you're writing, if you, if your mind's thinking faster than your hands, you know, at least for me, I sometimes write like the beginning of a word that I thought, but I wanted to write a different word. And so the wrong word comes out and then I'm like, okay, now I have half of a word that's not the word I wanted and I gotta turn it back into a word that works for this sentence because I don't want like white out and all that stuff. And it's a nice puzzle, <laughs> it's a fun game, uh, but it is tiring. And so I don't get a lot written when I write on the typewriter. Okay, number six. If I could claim a work of fiction as my own, who would I claim? Um, the Lottery. It's a short story, uh, an old one. I think it was written in the 80s, maybe the 70s. I doubt it was that old. Maybe it is. I read it in college in a speculative fiction class and I fell in love with it immediately. I've read it a million times now and I've shared it with everybody that that I like and that I want to impress with writing. Number seven, do you set goals? If so, how? I do. Um, I have a writing group and we try to meet once a week, if not two times a week. I don't really write outside of the writing group. I don't have a, a reason to get something done by a certain deadline. Um, it's really unfortunate that I need deadlines, but I guess I do. So um, that's, that's kind of what I have to do with myself. So when I first started writing big time, I made a 90 day calendar and I decided in the first 30 days I wanted to do this these things and in the second 30 days I wanted to do these things which were compounded on getting these things done and then in the last 30 days I felt like I could do this other thing of course I was wrong and I didn't get everything done but it still propelled me a lot further than if I hadn't had set that goal so all right number eight you win the Nobel in literature what is it that got you the award um I think if I got an award in literature, which I would be surprised by. <laughs> if I were to get a Nobel in literature, and I don't even know, it has to be like fiction or can it be nonfiction? I don't know anything about the Nobel Prize, to be honest. <laughs> um, but if you could get a, a Nobel in literature I, in memoir, I would do that. I would probably write a memoir about um, you know, how it is living a unique life. All right, and number nine, kind of going off of that, now you're a millionaire. Um, where do you live and what do you drive? So this kind of goes with my unique life. Um, I, I don't think me being a millionaire will change where I live or what I drive. Um, in fact, I would probably not know what to do with that much money and would freak out. 
<laughs> I think um, what you really need to be asking yourself is who are you gonna help? If you had that much money, who could you help? You could help so many people. Why don't we do that? Um, yeah. All right, and then uh, the last question here, number 10. Now you're dead, <laughs> which is a, a great beginning to end on this list. <laughs> and you're in right or heaven. Whew, I'm not right or hell. I guess that was, um, I guess that was now. That was reality. Um, five writers are in your writer group in this writer heaven. Who are they and why? Uh, and I wrote this list out and I was surprised. I never thought of this. I don't think about, um, again, big names and, and all that stuff. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm more about the here and now rather than like the, um, well, me personally, I'm about the here and now. My writing, I'm about the future. I love space and speculative, um, dystopian kind of things in the future. But anyways, um, writer heaven, who are they and why? I would have... Katie Waitman. She is a one-off writer. Uh, well, two-off. She wrote two books. I loved both of them. The Divided, and I'll put this in the description. But The Marrow Tree is my absolute favorite book of all time. I think I still have a copy somewhere. Over the years, I've like had a copy and then like not had a copy and then had a copy again. It just keeps finding me, which is funny. I found her book in the library when I was like a kid and loved it. Um, I'll put them down below. They're my favorite sci-fi alien, like multi-racial alien species kind of weird universe. Um, but she only wrote one book each on each of these different universes and she hasn't written anything since, which is sad. A lot of people want her to. Um, Tolkien, obviously, uh, he's the only dude on my list, which is surprising, but, uh, there you go. And then Judy Bloom. I'm gonna try and, um, I want to go to the master class that she has and and figure out um learn all of her knowledge basically and then octavia butler for obvious reasons um just phenomenal i'm reading dawn right now for a book club i'm in and it's blowing my mind um and then anne mccaffrey uh, for more obvious reasons she's amazing with her uh speculative fiction i remember reading dragons of pern in college because i had no idea who she was my roommate at the time was a big fan and she was like oh you gotta read these books and i did the first one was all sci uh, was all fantasy seemingly right like feudal fa fantasy kind of like castles and kings and then um there was like a little bit of time travel involved and then the second one like flipped the script and it was all sci-fi um and it was all about how this uh alien planet was colonized by smarter more technologically advanced people and then they became more feudal over time because they lost their technology and it's just it's just kind of like um one of my favorite shows is the 100 it's the very much the same uh everybody's very technologically advanced but then they have to live in a feudal kind of state in a castle kind of uh well not castle but like you know sticks and stones kind of situation um and yet they encounter technology that really is above and beyond their means um and it kind of tells them who who was around before and and what kind of people um they come from you know their descendants of so all very interesting um that is it i probably don't have much more time on this camera phone i will stop it here i hope you enjoyed this i hope you got to know me a little bit more um please do let me know uh what you would do with your million dollars i will shame you if you say you will buy yourself whatever the hell you want and not help anyone else. Um, and I don't know, I'm gonna go outside and enjoy this gray sky because it's all we got. All right, I will talk to you again later. Bye. It's like considerably cooler today because uh, we have this thing called the marine layer. And I think that the weather people just get bored of the same old thing. So they come up with new ideas. But uh, it basically means that it's cloudy all the time and, and it keeps the cool air down by the water and the hot air above the clouds so we don't get hot. Um, it's, it's totally Seattle, so. It's nice though, because I get to wear a hoodie and it's July. Is that nice? I don't think that's nice. <laughs> I'm drinking cold water in my mug. <laughs>